The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Welcome to Gen XYZ where we make it a point to discuss the important subjects, the subjects that have the youth in confusion and would require some light on. And even this week, we decided to do the same thing and bring to you a topic that is affecting most of the youth, that has the youth in questions but sometimes wouldn't be able to clarify and we have a specialist with us to give the explanation. Now, before we go into who our guest is today, just to give a context as to what our discussion is going to be, it's primarily going to be on the perception of body image. Now, many would say it's not that big of a deal, it, has, it doesn't affect a lot of people, but you might be a little concerned because we might not have the data to back this up, but a lot of the youth are in fact concerned about this and they see a lot, the, the society has a sort of perception on this and that really does affect the youth, be it from any background. And we really need to understand how to face this, what exactly the current problem is, and how to face it towards the future. And to get those answers, we are joined by Dr. Darshani Hetiarachi, a consultant, child and adolescent psychiatrist. First of all, thank you, Doctor, for joining us during this time and giving us this very valuable time of yours. Um, let's uh, take you right into the discussion, Doctor. I, I know we have a few things to cover, but I'm going to keep the first question brief and get you to you know, really give our audience a take on how your observations on how you have seen this uh, unravel. Um, one would say this is the youth's idea of imperfection. One would say you know, the a person has problems and that's okay to a certain extent understanding that one has faults is okay, but being obsessed with how your body looks. My initial question is where does this thought process come from, doctor? Like how does it begin in a, in a young or like a, even a child or an adolescent? Uh, adolescent? Uh, yes, uh, let me begin like this. So uh, this perfect body or the uh, perfect uh, body image, usually it is uh, the perfect body image is an individual's perception, a thought, beliefs and feelings about their own body which is usually influenced by the uh, media, uh, peer pressure, peer uh, waves and also family background, family waves as well as individuals own personality traits. So with all these factors, individuals tend to internalize all these messages and form their own body image. So, uh, according to the World Health Organization, they define the well a health or well-being of an individual as physical, psychological and social well-being. Mm. So, uh, physical well-being is the physical health as well as the functions of the body. So, I think you will be able to understand this body image or the per external appearance is a small component of this uh, physical health. Yeah. It's, uh, if you think about the physical well-being, it has to be the external appearance as well as the overall functions of the body. So let's see how this uh, body image is formed. Usually by age two, individual children uh, re start recognize themselves. So by age four, they start comparing themselves with other children, mainly the uh, clothes and the hair. But by age five, they start uh, thinking about the growth and by age six they start thinking about their external appearance. Mm -hmm. So what actually happens is by age 12 to 15 uh, they start uh, believing this body image is the most important thing in their self-esteem. So they think that self-esteem is mainly determined by body image. Mm -hmm. But actually body image is, as I explained earlier, it's just a perception of an individual about their body. But uh, self-esteem is an overall functions of the body mm -hmm. as a package. So which includes 
the external appearance mm. as well as the individual skills, capabilities, abilities, strengths, all these things are included in the self-esteem. All right, Doctor, I think uh, that sort of like the context to it, all of this is pretty clear and uh, thank you for actually breaking it down to those age categories because that is also something that people wouldn't understand. Mindset changes extremely uh, frequently, extremely fast when it comes to the first few years of development. We'll talk about these development stages towards the future also, Doctor. Now, um, with your experience, since on a daily basis, as not even outside you told us that you experience this on a daily basis, the, the difficulties, the mental health issues that the youth face on a daily basis and then part of that is going to be about their perception of themselves and the confidence attached to that. How damaging has it been, Doctor? How have you witnessed this you know, manifest in the children and how have you seen patients come to you? you know, what kind of issues do you see arising from this kind of sort of, it, it might be not the right word, but this sort of obsessive uh, you know, uh, compulsion towards understanding whether you have the perfect body or not? Yeah. So let me start this way, yeah. like society defines the beauty. So when society defines the beauty, uh, individuals, as I explained, individuals formulate their own body image. So when the, their perceived body image is not up to the standard of the so-called society defined beauty, they become uh, dissatisfied about their external appearance. Mm -hmm. So what happens is then they start uh, doing multiple activities, various things to achieve that society defined beauty. Uh, for example, they may engage in multiple beauty related activities using excessive beauty cultural materials mm -hmm. and taking selfies and editing mm -hmm. them and uh, post these editing edited pictures in of social media yeah. Yeah. and then counting likes, reactions. Uh, so in this way, they try to spend more and more time on becoming uh, more Accepted. beautiful, ex yeah. uh, more beautiful, and more uh, uh, towards this uh, ac the accepted, society, uh, accepted yeah. uh, beautiful beauty. Yeah. So, uh, what actually happens with that is they t tend to ignore most of other important areas in their life. For example, True. they might. Uh, uh, neglect their academic activities, they might uh, neglect their he health. Mm -hmm. I mean, they may not uh, take uh, care quite of their amount of uh, uh, quite amount of nutritional yeah. food, adequate sleep, regular exercises, and they may also have, you know, uh, not engaging uh, social activities, okay. social gatherings in a proper way. Yeah. And at the same time, if this persists, then they can start di dieting, which may uh, lead to abnormal dieting patterns, True. even to eating disorders. Mm. Maybe we can discuss about yeah. it later. Yeah, I, that, we, I wanted to give you enough and more time to talk about disorders per se, doctor. Since you touched on this, uh, and this was also something we have seen on a lot of like the documentaries and studies being done on the youth and their introduction to social media, and they, they acceptance they want there. Now my question, Dr. comes from, uh, I think the first two questions both are based on this, where this thought process arises from. Do you think it's particularly, now that the, there are ways in which society can measure uh, how good you look or how, how you don't, is, are those the reasons that you see primarily as pushing towards people there? Is, is that something that you have understood? Yeah. Yes, uh, there are multiple reasons. Yeah. The societal expectations about okay. the beauty is one thing. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the peer pressure and the peer uh, uh, beliefs like beliefs. you know the adolescent age they always want to get fit into a social group so if this group is believing uh, about the beauty in a, or if they define this beauty in a particular way so these adolescents tend to uh, work on that uh -huh. and at the same time sometimes the family pressure or the family attitudes towards the beauty can also lead to this uh, thinking process mm -hmm. and also individuals own thinking pattern we call it temperament or the personality traits can also lead to thinking in a different way right doctor um, since we did touch on the medical conditions and you know the things that will be attached to this i, I want you to uh, speak about it now when we can like, take some time on it as well. What are the, con like, on, on a layman's perspective, using words like obsession or addiction, 
we easily use it but yeah. there is a big meaning behind those words and i think you all have really separated that and really taught you know this this state this will be this is what addiction is this is what obsession is so give us a briefing on that also doctor but as you go ahead what are the other mental disorders or things that children are inflicted with or the youth are inflicted with as of now the disorders that you have witnessed that you have to deal with on a daily basis attached to uh, the body image yeah so one thing is as i said when they start thinking more and more about their external appearance and they start becoming preoccupied about their external appearance there is a group of adolescents tend to uh, think or they can have fixated imagine deformities about their body parts or about the whole body so they uh, they believe that their part of the body is abnormal so with this belief we call it body image distortion with this thinking process they tend to always uh, look in the mirrors and checking checking behaviors we call is uh, and also try to correct it sometimes these adolescents try to get plastic surgeries the medical support the, with this distorted body image they can even go up to eating disorders there are a couple of eating disorders like uh, we call them anorexia nervosa bulimia nervosa and also binge eating disorders if i to explain some symptoms of mm. an eating disorder if Please someone to understand yeah. uh, how when someone is having uh, it symptoms of uh, eating disorder so they may have abnormal patterns of eating sometimes they eat a lot or they sometimes eat very small amount of uh, food the, they may be strict vegetarians they may be selective eaters like eat very small amount they only eat vegetables they only eat green leaves and sometimes uh, they eat secretively and also they may also start like uh, purging vomiting excessive exercises to lose their weight that is voluntarily vomiting uh, uh, yeah. in self induced vomiting self-induced. we call yeah. and also they are obsessed as you said they are always preoccupied about their external appearance and this perceived body image uh, abnormalities mm. so they tend to check it all the time in the mirrors and also they always try to get support from other people to get it corrected always seeking reassurance and also they present it very low self esteem and self confidence because they always comparing themselves with this uh, uh, so called uh, so society defined beauty and so they always feel that they are not up to the standard so they always have this tend to have this low self esteem and low self confidence in addition to that we see many young adolescents with these body image issues can have can uh, have increased risk of anxiety and depressive disorders as well as self harming behaviors mm-hmm. doctor um, if now if you i think you did touch on this i i want you to spend some time more uh, we can do it in our next segment also doctor things like the process of moving to depression or the process of going towards anxiety when it hits those extreme levels how can what are the symptoms what should we be looking out for i think the majority of the audience or the youth that are watching this program would want to know if they are inflicted or if some one of their friends are inflicted this what what should they be looking out for what are the key symptoms that like you would see within anyone that comes to you yeah so first of all i would like to say that uh, preoccupied or thinking about the external appearance is not a bad thing a bad we thing. all like to hmm. be look Uh, good yeah. you know but uh, the thing is that you shouldn't go to an extreme like if an a young adult uh, adolescent or a youth always preoccupied about this and they will gradually neglect uh, their usual day to day activities as i mentioned earlier so if there is a significant functional impairment which is uh, as a result of this uh, thinking process and behaviors related to it then we can consider it as a mental health issue so if someone is having uh, anxiety related issues usually when they feel that uh, they are not up to the standards of the society expected beauty they will ha- develop low uh, self esteem and self confidence so they may be reluctant to go to the social gatherings face other people because they feel that they are not 
pretty enough, beautiful enough. So they try to hide from social situations. So social avoidance and excessive worries, uh, excessive uh, fears about uh, facing social situations. Mm -hmm. So if someone is having excessive worries and avoidance about uh, engaging social activities and which result in functional impact where they are unable to engage in normal day-to-day uh, -day social activities, then we consider it as a problem. Mm -hmm. As well as, apart from that, if someone is, uh, as I said, depression is also common among this uh, uh, youth group. So if someone, after this uh, preoccupation about this uh, external appearance, preoccupation, always taking behaviors, and with that, if they develop uh, excessive worries, excessive sadness, uh, lack of interest in usual other activities, uh, lack of energy in their body and withdrawn from social activities, poor sleep, not eating adequate, mm -hmm. uh, then we consider it as some kind of mental health issue where that's they cool. need support. Yeah, um, I think that's a very good, uh, that's very good that you listed those symptoms out that we can be careful about whether people around us are facing that. Doctor, we need to go in for a short break and we'll come back and we'll continue this discussion. We are in conversation with Dr. Dashani Hetiarachi on the youth's sort of obsessive behavior on body image. We'll continue this discussion right after this break. Stay with us on GenXYZ. Back to Gen XYZ, we are in conversation with Dr. Darshani Hityaraji, who is a consultant, child and adolescent psychiatrist. A doctor, within our first segment, I think you gave a very good context as to you know what issues the youth are facing and uh, how it has been manifested within the youth. That was very good, and we can sort of continue and like build upon exactly that. Now, something very interesting that you touched on, doctor, is considering your mental health, considering your physical health. They are not exactly bad things. It is that obsession, as you very, you know, very rightly put, that obsessive sort of behavior when you move into and when you forget about everything else and just primarily focus on this. Does it become an unhealthy sort of attribute? Um, what are the positive elements of this? Now, towards the end of the discussion, we can talk about uh, solutions and you know, how to address this issue. But what can we take as okay? This, you know, having these sort of habits taken out of this is actually a good thing. These are the bad elements. I think the bad elements you did point out, what are the good elements, Doctor? As you said, uh, someone focusing about their external appearance is also good, you know. Like we all like to look good and we all like to maintain that uh, external appearance in a good way. However, what is important is that you have to understand external appearance is only a small component of physical well-being. So doing ex uh, regular exercises, having nutritional food, uh, engaging uh, in uh, leisure activities, relaxation activities, having good sleep, all these components come under maintaining good physical health. So if someone is focusing only on external appearance and neglecting other components, then that will not be good. But if uh, someone is focusing all these areas, then that will be good to maintain a good physical health. Right. Uh, doctor, you did mention that the obsession falls on things, even when it comes to the physical element, the obsession is not on the healthy aspects. And uh, you very rightly showed that this is some sort of social construct that they're going to be following. Uh, if I can just like keep a very open-ended, a general question, doctor. What are the other areas of like, in or other areas that this can trickle down to? Now, you did mention things like depression. Now, those are, uh, one would say, more difficult uh, social uh, psychological issues that uh, the youth or anyone would have to face. Anything else of that sort that we should be aware of, Doctor, when it comes to 
Oh, well, uh, my question comes from things like: Can depression lead to this form of behavior? Can can it, this be mm, this not be the starting point, but sort of like the ending point of another issue that we are facing? How how can we understand all this stuff? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Even a depressed person, as I men mentioned earlier, like low self-esteem, low self-confidence. So these things also can lead to uh, negatively evalu exactly. evaluate yourself. So as you uh, said, like if someone is already depressed, having low self-esteem, low self-confidence, then again they may think about themselves in a negative way which result in uh, developing abnormal perception about their external appearance. Mm -hmm. And also I have seen many adolescents, they start using substances, mm -hmm. uh, smoking, uh, to build up that external appearance like you know in uh, our society uh, using alcohol or uh, smoking might uh, show them uh, this masculine little True. behavior. True. So sometimes to overcome that inferiority or the low self-esteem, adolescents tend to deviate to some unhealthy behaviors to top up that uh, deficit in their external appearance. Mm -hmm. Right. Just to touch on something like nutrition, no, just to so that uh, my I want to take the all the solution based answers towards the end. I'm trying to limit you from going to those areas now. Things like nutrition, yes, society is taking a bit of an interest today. Uh, the youth are taking an interest, but how can we? Because psych psychology is also affected by having bad nutritional habits. And that is also an important. How have you understood the importance of nutrition in this whole process of having good mental health or having a mental health where you can make good de decisions or you know, go forward in life? What is the role that nutrition plays in all of this? Talk? Yes, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, according to the WHO uh, definition, like uh, overall well being of oh, good health of an individual is maintaining physical, psychological, and social well being. So, nutrition is a very important component when it comes to all physical, psychological, and social well-being. Because good nutrition is important to keep your body healthy, growth of the body, as well as the development and growth of your brain. As we all know, adolescent brain, youth brain is still developing. So we call it the adolescent uh, the brain is developing up to the age of 21. So when we focus on ad, uh, youth, their brain is still developing. Mm -hmm. So this developing brain needs nutrition. So good nutrition is important for a better brain development, which result in good, uh, better mental health, well-being. Mm -hmm. As well as when you are healthy, when you are having a good nutrition, then only you will be able to maintain good social interactions. Okay. Doctor, social interactions was something that you mentioned even within our first segment, and I wanted to touch on it there as well. And we'll try and take it up here. You mentioned, okay, now with this construct, with this ideology that I can't go to society because of how I look, I'm not, I don't have the perfect body shape for what society is expecting us. And then you isolate yourself, you remove yourself from society, and your only sort of uh, social existence would be on social media. And one would say that has some toxic element to it also. Is that a, you know, I, I singled out nutrition before, now I want to single out uh, social interactions and ask you, is that an important part in you know fighting should we go to the peers, even if peer pressure is working against us? Should we go and you know have and try and build social interactions to work around our mental health issues? And one of one part would be you know our obsessions with you know, what body image is like. Is that also something you suggest? Is social interaction a good thing in those? Yes, areas? for adolescents or youth. Definitely, social interactions are very important to build up a better person or a good personality development. Because with the social interactions only, they will be able to communicate with other people mm -hmm. or improve their communication skills and assertiveness skills. As you said, say no if he, exactly. uh, they do not like something, to say no. And also sympathize other people's feelings, emotions, empathize other people people's feelings, emotions, problem solving. All these skills are developed, all these skills are needed to become a successful person True. as an adult. So for that, adolescents or youth definitely need good social interactions to build up these skills. Mm -hmm. So social interactions is a vital component in personality development in youth and adolescents. So 
I do not advise anyone to avoid social interactions uh, thinking that it can be harmful. The important skill which they develop is to be assertive, to be with anyone and to be assertive and to be resilient, mm -hmm. to cope with different different people in the society. Mm -hmm. Doctor, uh, I think when we were discussing before this program also something very interesting that uh, you had pointed out is, you know, even, even when it comes to me, when it comes to this subject as well, we, I would do some reading on it. And even you, you have studied on this to a great extent. You have experience working with patients. Now, one thing that I had discovered is when you do read and when you go to these sources, your understanding of yourself, the horizons sort of like was. Are there any sources that you can suggest, doctor, you know, read these sources and get an understanding of these diseases or these things? And that will be helpful in those regards so that they can make their discovery on their own without an adult or a parent or someone telling, we'll talk about the parents' role later on. But like, can you suggest, okay, get educated, learn about these things. Are, are those some steps that we can really like look at? Since the last part of this program is going to be based on solutions, Doctor, I want to ask you that. Are there sources that you can you know, direct people to? Because they, they must be able to understand it also because a lot of technical terms might, yeah. someone might not understand. Mm. But how can they get a better understanding of the situation that they are in? Well, they can get this information through uh, multiple, multiple uh, sources. So one is, as you said, this uh, in, uh, internet, where they can get Med Plus, Medline, Pediatrics. There are some journals called Pediatrics. They mainly focus on eating disorders. Uh, they, uh, there are some articles. They explain these things in a simple manner yes, for adolescents to understand. But I prefer them to, apart from this uh, access they like if they can get support uh, from professionals if they need any support mm -hmm. that would be that's that's better. something you suggest yeah yeah uh, professional help is something that we have also advocated throughout this program doctor because professionals such as yourself who have a good idea without anyone else giving that sort of advice now moving towards the end of the program we have one more segment something i want to really like get a segue to this is now you have seen, you have explained actually the influencing factors that affects a child and affects this form of behavior, the societal norms, the kind of uh, things that uh, affect, influ influences the child, influences the youth and all that. Should, now I, I don't think it's something that we can suggest to you know, block people away from society, block them away from the internet, block them away from social media. People should be able to experience, explore, and that sort of experience is what gives them the knowledge to face uh, things in the future. And something I I was really happy that you mentioned was the fact that children should be assertive, be able to say no in society to things that they don't really like. Where are those skills lacking, Doc? Now, because this primary problem, the problem of body image, comes from the fact that you believe the societal notion that perfection is where you should go to so you are not capable of addressing that by yourself let's talk about how you can build those emotions build those qualities because i think this is directly at your subject and what the kind of advice you have to give to your patients also about how to build those emotions doctor where where do where can we start yeah the f first thing i would like to ad advise the youth is that uh, this external appearance is very much similar to a perfect built statue but you need to differentiate a statue or the external appearance from the uh, individual body because the individual body uh, has like multiple functions so in an individual body its external appearance is only a small component so if you can differentiate that the external appearance is just a small component and you have to focus on multiple factors multiple functions which your body or which yourself can do so where they are this we have to focus on the self-esteem so if I to differentiate the body image and the um, self-esteem body image as I mentioned I mentioned it's an individual's perception about their body but the self-esteem is individual's uh, perception about 
all these activities as a package. You know, the external appearance, uh, their capabilities, their abilities, their strengths, their skills, all these things come there. So if someone can focus on all overall well-being uh, with the physical, psychological, social well-being and to consider this minor part, this external appearance is a small component of this overall well-being, then they will be able to differentiate how important this external appearance and how important to focus on overall other areas in your mm -hmm. personal life. Yeah. One thing is that, uh, second thing is it is very important to build up your self-esteem and self-confidence. Exactly. Always focus on your own strengths and capabilities rather than comparing yourself with other people. Everyone is unique, you know, we all have our own capabilities and abilities, strengths, skills. So it may be different from other people. So we may not have the skills and capabilities of other people, but we are unique. So we all have our own strengths. So it is important to understand you that uh, who we are, what are our strengths, what are our goals, how we should go to these goals, then we may be able to leave this uh, concept of uh, external appearance aside. Mm -hmm. Third component is you have to be very selective when you are watching programs about this uh, yeah. uh, beauty and this socially defined self-image and uh, also you should have some control. You have to be selective as well as you should have your own control rather than spending all your time on that. And also to focus on the impact of this uh, behaviors on your overall development and success as an adult. Mm -hmm. Doctor, uh, very, very good segue you have given to us to go into our last segment. We'll take a very short break. And we'll discuss further the solution aspect of all this, how we can face this as an individual and as society. You're with Gen XYZ, stay with us. Gen XYZ, we are in our last segment and we are in conversation with Dr. Darshani Hetiarachi, consultant child and adolescent psychiatrist. Uh, doctor, a lot of content you took us through within the past few minutes. I want to, since it's our last segment, uh, let's just touch a bit on the current situation. Like there are people within their homes and this, uh, the, the question of mental health really came out when people are removed from social interactions for uh, for legitimate purpose but like it was it had it took a toll on, on children on, on parents and you know general society as a whole how has have, have you seen people forming their opinions of being affected by this obsession of body image has that been better increased in sort of vulnerability how has the pandemic affected their mindset yeah, as you said, this limited social interactions and limited interactions with peer groups has significantly affected as adolescents as well as youth. So since they are stuck at home with very limited activities, we are commonly seeing increased mental health issues among children, adolescents and youth. So among them, this preoccupation about their external appearance and uh, obsessions and repetitive behaviors to keep more beautiful mm -hmm. has become more prevalent because mainly that they are having very they are stuck at home with very limited activities very limited activities for their self satisfaction so because of that they tend to engage more and more in this social media uh, television or those are the only entertainments they are having at home which has resulted in them engaging more and more of this uh, undesi unacceptable, undesirable behaviors. True. That's a very good point that you showed that because their, their interactions are limited and interactions were particularly certain factors and it, it was limited to those things. Now, Doctor, I think I want to let you continue with the thought process you brought in towards the end of our previous segment on the solutions. 
on what we can do. And uh, my first primary question was how we can build characteristics where you are confident with the body image with you have, the, with the personality you have, you know, how you can face society with your individual uniqueness. And you gave some very good, you know, uh, good understanding. If you can dwell deeper into that, Doctor, how do we essentially overcome this sort of obsession now? It's easy for someone to stand out and, you know, say, you know, just get over it kind of thing. But the person who is going through it is actually going through an internal battle and mm -hmm. it's a very difficult battle. Mm -hmm. um, how, what kind of support can, I believe a medical professional can do the best, give the best kind of support. But what, what, what is the sort of external element that someone within as a peer group, as a, maybe as a parent, maybe someone who's associated with an individual can do to support them out of this process? Yeah. I think the society has a major role in supporting these individuals mm -hmm. uh, because this, the way the society looking at this and the way they are defining this beauty, uh, so they have to be very responsible so. in the defining this beauty. As we all know, this uh, definition of uh, beauty or the external appearance has change over a period of time you know in the ancient period it was different now it is completely different so in the future it will further mm -hmm. be changed so it is a dynamic process so it's important for the society to be responsible i think we call it this uh, body positive approach yeah. where the society empowers societal approach to empower each and in every individual we, irrespective of their external appearance, which is important, as well as the uh, body diversity, we are the society uh, tend to accept each and every individual's external appearance. Like, for example, if anyone can have different external appearance, so to accept rather than defining a particular way of uh, beauty, this uh, the external appearance people can have different external appearance. So this. Uh, body diversity exactly. is also important mm -hmm. and uh, as parents I think as adults they also have a big role in supporting individuals especially uh, adolescents and youth as I mentioned initially their brain is still developing mm -hmm. so they are uh, more vulnerable because their brain is developing from backside to the front side mm -hmm. so the front side we call this a frontal lobe area it is the main area which is responsible for decision making mm -hmm. so the decision making area of the brain in adolescence is still developing so they always mm -hmm. need support from ad adults when they need to take decisions so pa uh, parents have to be uh, aware about it so one thing their parents should always spend more time on their children and uh, try to understand them. When they need support, it is very important for parents to spend time and be available. Especially we call it emotional availability. We are to understand their concerns, worries and try to support them in a positive way. Because what we have seen in most of the times that parents, they do not spend enough time on adolescents because they believe that now they are big enough to uh, look after their, themselves. So and uh, also, it is important to be emotionally available, there to understand them and support them when they need emotional support. And uh, role modeling, because sometimes parents also focus more on about their external appearance, which might uh, affect uh, yeah. individuals in an it unhealthy did, way. Yeah. And the critical comments, because we have seen uh, many families, like, you know, they compare siblings with each other. This one is fair, this one is dark, this one is thin, this one is... Uh, uh, fat like that. Yeah. So it is very important for adults or parents not to compare siblings mm -hmm. and not to make critical comments about their external appearance because I have seen so many adolescents they have become uh, distressed or they have developed these beha behaviors, thinking patterns after critical comments made by parents about their external appearance. Mm -hmm. So the parent and any figure that is the role model figure has a bigger responsibility. I think that's a very important thing. Doctor, you really opened the door to this sort of movement that is happening elsewhere and it hasn't really come to Sri Lanka as of now, this body positivity movement that you mentioned because I, regardless of the color, the size, that really doesn't matter as of this point. It is the kind of uh, content that you have as an individual is what, what really matters. Mm, towards the end of the program, Doctor, now, 
what do you see as core recommendations you made? You did suggest to the outside, the peer groups and their responsibilities. Now, if we talk about that individual who might have an array of problems and this will be one way that it is uh, being shown uh, and there might be people who watch who are who require that sort of support to know that you know there are other people like them there are there is help available and you really touched on some of that as well what recommendations do you make for them to take as maybe like a first step because this it might not be the end of the the goal rather the journey to get in there that is the journey becomes what's the, what's most important in these scenarios where where do you see that first step or where do you see that f like because uh, speaking to a lot of psychiatrists what they have primarily mentioned is you have to make that decision it is not something someone else can come and tell you I think you'll agree with me on this if that is the case what can you do as a first step doctor? yeah the first step is an individual to differentiate the uh, statue and the functional body so if they can uh, define this external appearance as a statue and the overall well-being as the bodily functioning, physical, psychological, social well-being, then first thing that they will realize external appearance is a small component in an individual's overall well-being. So with that, they will be able to focus on other areas of physical, psychological and social well-being. Uh, next thing, it's very important to focus the same continuation of the same thing exactly. actually yeah. so they have to identify who they are what are their goals then only they will be able to uh, go on that track leaving aside uh, about focusing on this mm -hmm. external yeah. appearance and then limiting comparison and also it's very important to have a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. so when we focus on healthy lifestyle important areas are maintain a good nutrition regular exercises mm -hmm. this regular exercises is different from an individual doing strenuous exercises to lose weight in an mm. eating disorder yeah, right yeah, exactly. so it has to be regular exercises and uh, adequate sleep mm -hmm. and then the, those are the physical component for the physical well-being and when it comes to the psychological well-being actually these three components are overlapping so the psychological well-being it's very important to uh, do some s relaxation exercises engaging in some pleasurable activities uh, being with peer groups and at the same time to building up uh, your own skills uh, problem solving skills thinking abilities uh, time management all these skills and then move on to the social skills it is also very important to be with other people engaging and maintaining interpersonal relationships friendships and uh, as i said building up your assertiveness skills communication skills and all these survival skills uh, then only mm -hmm. uh, as i mentioned the overall uh, well-being will be developed, developed. doctor uh, i think we have about one or two minutes left i want to give you the opportunity to give sort of like a message to the people that are watching in terms of in terms of your experience actually it's sort of like a personal sort of question when you have to meet patients and something that you have to constantly sort of explain to these people or explain to children explain to the youth a sort of message to them to build their own sort of identity what would you tell them doctor if it in short or you can you know really explain it something that you have to consistently remind the youth because you also means that you have children and that their behavior is also something that you have to observe for quite some time what do you have to really like tell as a message for them to really craft their own identity yeah in a simple manner i would like to say you are unique you have your own skills strengths capabilities so please do not compare yourself with other people always set your own goals and go your, your own, journey. own journey all right i think that's a very important and very concise <laughs> message that you have given us that the youth can really take forward dr darshani hetiarachi thank you once again for joining us a consultant child and adolescent psychiatrist uh, and you work at the teaching hospital in karapeti yeah. um uh, thank, thank you. you for inviting me no for problem. this. Uh, <laughs> thank you for taking the time, Doctor. I know this is a difficult time period and you have a uh, tight schedule as well. Uh, I would like to thank our viewers for joining us on Gen XYZ. We really broke down this 
contention that was there with body image and the doctor really explained the psychological elements to this and how we can towards the end how we can overcome this we'll do the same we keep we'll keep doing the same within this program bring in another topic and break it down for the benefit of the youth for the benefit of our viewers about how society can face these issues and how the youth can face these issues you have been with gen xyz and that is dhanwasam have a great evening <laughs>